All right, everybody, I am back. I hope you guys have been enjoying the last two videos. The first one was very detailed and relatively long so that I walked you through every step of the process of vacuum refilling your untampered CLI type cartridges for Canon printers. And that would include CLI 8s in the older printers as well as the CLI 42 on the Pro 100. If you're lucky to still have one of those, um, make sure that you consider this method if you don't want to go ahead and modify your cartridges. I have a cartridge holder here made by Rudy Hallamum, also the creator of this whole system. The yellow one I actually modified and I have a bunch of other modified cartridges as well. So it's not that I am favoring one over the other, but this gives you a choice as to how to approach refilling. The other seven colors, other than the yellow, were refilled via vacuum system. And a lot of those were actually my cartridges that I allowed to go empty. So the fear of never allowing your cartridge to go empty only applies to refilling with modified cartridges or what we refer to as top filling your cartridge. That means you have a plug on the top and then you go ahead and add ink as required. And when is that required? Well, it is required when the low warning is about to be triggered. You don't want to go beyond that because this sponge right here will get filled with air and refilling from the top is this passive type refilling method. It will not force or displace any air trapped in those fibers. So you want to catch that. If you choose to go with the modified cartridges, that's fine. Go ahead and do that. But you have to take into consideration that the refilling process has to be caught prior to low. Now, in most cases, we recommend that you have two sets of cartridges, one that has already been fully reset and fully refilled. And so then when one of the colors reaches about to hit low, remove all eight cartridges, replace them immediately with the ones that have been previously prepped, and then attach them to a holder. Hopefully you will be purchasing one of these from uh, Rudy. Of course, you're going to go ahead and reset them, put them on the holder. You better have some of these clips as well. This is something extra you really need to consider buying because otherwise you have to deal with the originals, which have to be sort of rubber banded on in order to produce a seal. Otherwise, you will get ink all over the place. Now, I have made a couple of modifications. Let me move the camera a little bit so that you know what I am about to show you. Okay, I think we're oriented okay now. I have this tray here because you really should have a tray that you don't mind getting dirty. The reason being is that there's always a possibility of ending up with a couple of little droplets of ink here and there. That happens, that is part of the game, folks. So do not worry about getting a little bit dirty. This is part of the refilling game. That's a slightly better view. So let's begin. We'll put this aside for the time being. We have a holder and you guys saw me use this and this is actually designed to hold that cartridge at the proper angle and it is actually upside down. Okay, long long time ago somebody made a so-called vacuum filling system which actually was quite nicely machined out of a bar stock and basically it did the same thing. It applied a seal over the existing vent and then it had a lure lock port at the bottom for you to inject ink. You turn the cartridge upside down, you pull back on the plunger, you let go and it would actually only fill the liquid port about three quarters full. So it wasn't as effective as this method is. All right, so here's what I did earlier because I realized I, as I was doing this, 
I was getting a little bit of foam in my liquid chamber here, the ink reservoir. So here's what we did. I took the smaller one that was originally provided to me by Rudy. I basically made a larger one. So this has a capacity of about 30 full milliliters. This only held about maybe 22. So when you add 10 and you pull back, there's a possibility you're gonna create some foam. We don't want that. We never want foam to ever enter into this upper portion of the seal. Okay, and especially you don't you do not want ink traveling into your syringe. That's why I suggested to Rudy. Originally it was supposed to be like this. Okay, and I thought that is just too much leverage for somebody to accidentally tip this over as they are trying to apply vacuum because it does require quite a bit of quite a bit of pullback force and you could end up with maybe breaking this because of the torque sideways so I decided to go with a lure adapter it's just the smallest one they make it attaches to the back of the cap and then I put a piece of tubing on it like so and then I simply attach that tubing to my syringe now I have a more flexible way of applying pressure or vacuum pressure without the danger of maybe knocking this sideways or whatever, which I don't want to do. All right, so these are little things that I have discovered as I have been playing around with the system. So let's go ahead and go quickly. I'm not going to really refill. I'm just going to go through the motions. So we have the special holder. We have a cartridge that is unmodified and yet it is flush. How did I do that? I actually used this. I used this to flush it. So that is for a future video. We'll attach it tightly, <clears throat> like so, and we'll insert it. We got to make sure we got the correct orientation here, like so. As long as you have the sealing screw back, wound backwards, it'll enter easily. If it's a little tight, that means you have not loosened the screw enough. So at this point, we're going to go ahead and apply some clockwise turns of the um, screw until it is just about finger tight. That's about it right now. So now we have the cartridge oriented correctly at the right angle it says right here up it says CLI R2 so we're gonna go ahead and attach our ink reservoir we're gonna unhook it we'll screw it on we have relocated the camera we get a wider view so that you don't miss anything here at this point you would then add the required 10 milliliters of ink and attach the vacuum cap to the reservoir like so now here's what we were experiencing you notice how this can move you see that so imagine if this was actually attached directly it, it could possibly cause a bit of an accident so we don't want that to happen I made the suggestion to Rudy I made the suggestion for him to enlarge and basically this is cut out of a 30 milliliter syringe it's just too short and the foam buildup causes foam to actually enter the syringe if you are directly attaching it to the ink reservoir so by creating sort of a an isolation system also making it a larger volume so when the ink is loaded to just 10 milliliters yeah you may get ink foam buildup up to about this level but it's not going to enter we do not I repeat we do not want ink entering this syringe you will be replacing it after just a few uses because the components of ink actually cause the plunger to lose its smoothness let's just say because we're going to create vacuum and I want to be able to let go after I have created the proper amount of vacuum I want to be able to let go 
and have that plunger retract back in. If you do not have a smooth, unadulterated plunger, it will not move on its own. So you want to make sure that you never allow this. In fact, you don't ever have to rinse it because this will never become exposed to ink. Okay? So that is very, very key in this complete operation here. Longer reservoir, 10 ml, that gives you plenty of room for the foam production that you're going to encounter because glycol-based inks will form foam when you either shake them or introduce air into them or in this case pull back and create vacuum bubbles you're going to get foam and we do not want that to happen now because we are going to be applying vacuum to these cartridges you can run them until they're empty okay and even though there is air in the sponge just like there is air in the sponge right now you will be able to displace or pop explode destroy any kind of air bubbles that are trapped in the fibers when you let go ink will flow directly into the sponge now we want to make sure even though the cartridge may look like it has not been fully filled stop stop at that point because as soon as you disconnect this everything will be in balance when you remove the cartridge and flip it right side up and of course you've attached a clip to it already you will have a properly filled cartridge and even if you do get a little bit of ink on the vent it's very easy to walk over to the sink and just remove the clip squeeze the sides dislodge a few droplets of ink and that will clear the vent as soon as you load it into your printer and close that lid it will run a purge cycle which will clear the vent anyway of course directly after that you need to run a nozzle check just to make sure that your nozzle check is perfect because with Pro 100s and similar type printers the results are basically immediate as soon as you close the lid the purge cycle is triggered and the amount of ink that will be pushed through the printhead will equal whatever ink or air was left in the printhead during this whole operation and basically what will happen at this point is that your vent will be perfectly cleared out now Rudy is working currently on a holder for these the PGI 72 cartridges which of course will also work for the Pro 300 cartridges because they are identical in shape so this will be able to hold 10 cartridges in this orientation it'll be ID'd on the side just like these are you have the ID on the side matching each color but also he's going to create a little basically what I call a refilling platform it'll just hold one cartridge upside down and it'll have about a inch lateral space so that it can sit without tipping over and you can go ahead and visually unless you put the platform on a scale and weigh it and then you know that the cartridge weighs X amount when it is full, 32 grams plus the weight of the little holder. Now, he's also going to be creating a refilling method for these. Now, these can actually be refilled not necessarily by vacuum because you cannot really create a vacuum with these cartridges, but you can sure collapse that bag. So it'll be an adapter with a lure lock system on it you pop the adapter on it and then you attach a syringe with the proper amount of ink you pull back to collapse the bag and then inject the ink okay you have to know of course how much ink you need to properly fill a cartridge so it is best to start with an empty cartridge now that will come in very handy when you buy these cartridges from eBay because they come dried they come without this sometimes so there are some resellers that sell these clips so make sure you get some of those to be used if you get cartridges that come with the clips you're all set all you have to do is attach the adapter okay load the syringe onto it with the proper amount of ink pull back you're gonna need a large syringe one with at least like 
50 to 60 ml because you're going to have about 15 ml of ink and you're going to have to create about 15 ml worth of pullback because that bag has to be collapsed and of course the capacity of the bag equals the volume of ink it can load so 15 plus 15 that would be about 30 yeah maybe maybe you can get away with 30 but you know you have to have enough room to collapse that bag let everything relax and then inject the ink physically by pressure you will then fill the bag up once the syringe is empty remove it pop it on a scale if it's only 30 grams then you can dribble with a bottle and a needle some ink onto the sponge to bring it up to full level which is about 32 grams give or take depending on the accuracy of your scale and of course each one of these cartridges are not made perfectly accurate to the milligram okay so you're going to have to visually look at the sponge and figure out at what point it is declared if you will full so that's going to be fantastic to have and that'll save a lot of headaches especially with these cartridges that are being sold on ebay and i bought plenty of those and they are a headache to fill because that initial refill you're going to perform is just not going to work the way you expect it to okay it's not going to happen all right that's enough for now i'm sure that you are sick and tired of seeing my chest talk so let's go ahead and process this i will upload it and again the links for all of these items will be provided to me by rudy and i will of course then post them on all my subsequent new videos all right thank you so much don't forget to subscribe share and like and until the next time happy refilling and happy printing bye bye everyone